to welcome you all here, those of you who are here in person, and also those of you who are following us on, on Zoom for this very interesting meeting with Vice Minister Francisco Coy. Uh, and we're grateful to you, Minister, for finding the time to, uh, to come and speak to us all today. This event is organized in conjunction with the Embassy of Colombia in Ireland. Um, and I'm a former Irish diplomat, Bobby McDonough, and I'm, I'm delighted to pr perform this function today. Uh, so the running order will be that, first of all, uh, the Colum Colombian ambassador will say a few words, and then uh, Vice Minister Coy will speak for about 20 minutes or so. Then we'll have a Q&A session, which is open both to those of you who are here who can simply raise a hand to ask a question, but also to people on Zoom who should use the Q&A function on Zoom. And those who are following it on Zoom can start sending in your questions throughout the session, and we'll come to them later. And you should identify, um, if you're asking a question, who you are and if you have an affiliation. Um, I should just recall that both the Minister's remarks and the Q&A are on record today. Um, guests are invited to tweet, and the handle is at IIEA. Um, and the whole event will, will, will run till 4 o'clock or possibly a couple of minutes beyond that. So, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to invite the Ambassador to come up and say a few words. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests and members of the Institute of International European Affairs who are with us both in person and online. Uh, it is a great privilege and honor to welcome you all to this event where we have the pleasure to, of hosting the Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs of Colombia, Ambassador Francisco Coy, uh, on a discussion on exploration of Colombia foreign policy on peace and life, a, a subject that uh, resonates deeply with both Colombia and Ireland. Geographically distant uh, as we are, our shared experience in pursuit of peace, recon peace reconciliation and environmental protection have forged a bond that transcends borders and continents. Colombia and Ireland have both endured the profound challenge of conflict and division without our societies. Um, yet we have chosen the path of peace and reconciliation. Ireland's Good Friday Agreement, which marked a crucial turning point on its history, and Colombia's remarkable efforts of, in negotiating the peace accords with the Revolutionary Armed Force of Colombia stand as testament to the power of dialogue and diplomacy in resolving even the most difficult conflicts. Our experiences serve as beacons of hope for other nations that strive to put an end to violence and conflict. Illustrating that peace, illustrating that peace is attainable even in the most challenging circumstances. Furthermore, our nations uh, share a deep concern for the protection of life and the future of the, uh, our children. Both Colombia and Ireland are blessed with the stunning natural landscapes, and we understand the importance of preserving our planet for future uh, generations. Whether it is the lush green hills of Ireland or the rich biodiversity of Colombia rainforest, our commitment to environmental protection transcends borders. Today, we are privileged to have by Minister uh, Francisco Coy, a career diplomatic, uh, diplomat, I'm sorry, who I personally know uh, to be a distinguished representative of our uh, foreign policy, providing valuable, in, valuable insights in Colombia's journey toward total peace and the importance of safeguarding life in all its forms. At the, uh, after a very um, fruitful dialogue with our Irish colleagues during the political consultation that we engaged in er earlier today, his presence here underscores the enduring bond between our two nations and our shared commitments to promoting peace, reconciliation, and the protection of life at the global stage. I invite you all to actively participate in today's discussion. Uh, your insights and perspectives will undoubtedly enrich our understanding of these critical issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Vice Minister Francisco Coy, um, 
is the Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs of Colombia. He joined the Colombian Foreign Service in 1988. He served as advisor to the Minister for Foreign Affairs from 1920 to 22. He was the Deputy Chief of Mission to the European Union, NATO, Belgium and Luxembourg for five years from 2015 to 2020. His other diplomatic postings include Washington and Rome. Uh, he has been a professor of Colombian foreign policy, comparative foreign policy and US foreign policy at several universities. So it's an enormous pleasure and honor to invite you, Minister, to address us on the very interesting and I hope uplifting topic of a Colombian foreign policy on life and peace. Thank you very much. Would you like to do it for him, perhaps? Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me for having this conversation. Um, as a, our ambassador, Camilo Ristolas will be my first time in, in, in Ireland. We held this morning political consultations. Yeah, and then uh, that's why this place, uh, I was reading a little minutes, uh, some minutes late, so I'm sorry, I apologize for that. But uh, I think this is a very interesting opportunity to share with you some views about what's going on in Colombia regarding foreign policy and peace. Uh, I understand yeah, because we've been talking with Ireland for many years about our peace process. We have been receiving cooperation and support from Ireland in several instances among the Security Council until last year. But we have a long conversation on peace. This is a very interesting topic to talk with, with Ireland. Uh, but my, I, I, I know that an official spokesman for, for the peace issues, but I can talk about foreign policy and the way to understand uh, the peace, the peace initiative we are moving, uh, particularly within Colombia, but we also have a, a projection in our foreign policy. So thank you to the IIEA and its director, Alex White, for hosting me today at this major research institute for European and international policy in Ireland and Europe. Uh, thank you to my dear colleague and friend Camilo Ruiz for co-organizing this event. Thank you all for your presence here and for those who are connected through Zoom uh, for your interest in Colombia. I feel very honored to be here today as I'm aware the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of my country have participated in events and this institution regarding foreign policy and peace. That the dear friend of Colombia and dear friend of mine, Iman Gilmer, you envoy for peace has been sharing with you in several locations of the advance of peace in Colombia and the experience that share between Ireland and Colombia on the peace implementation. I want to start giving you a, a brief overview of our foreign policy on life and peace. That is basically the main topics on the, our national development plan under this government. And then we'll try to, to get some specifics of, the, of our peace initiatives. Of course, uh, I'm more interested in hearing your views and your questions about what we're going to, to present. So I'll, I'll try to be brief. I don't know if I'm going to use the whole 20 minutes, uh, probably less than that. As you know, the government of President Petro started a, more than a year ago, 7 August of 2022, the District Colombia took constitute our country as a world power on life. This is an uh, addition from, from him. And having uh, uh, as a core of this policy what's been called a total peace in our country. Our foreign policy aims to first position Colombia as a regional leader in international agenda in topics such as drug policy, migration, climate crisis, and the construction and maintaining some peace as both domestically and abroad. And second, uh, second, increasing the country con capacity to influence global processes involving Colombian internal interests, needs, and in third place, deepen relations with the state and non state actors to contribute to a productive transformation with the generation of the, uh, the urbanized economy, climate action, and reducing existing national gaps in the country. Probably if any of you have heard President Petro uh, remarks international international forum, uh, he, he stated very clearly that uh, humanity, the planet is approaching a, 
a very critical juncture where we have to act, particularly on climate crisis, to avoid the catastrophic effects of the situation. Besides that, we are confronting multiple crises in the international system that we need to confront with cooperation. We were addressing an innovative agenda for foreign policy with a gender focus where we are in the process of establishing a feminist foreign policy. We need to, uh, to address uh, migration issues with a human approach. You probably heard about the, we are, we are very active on the migration approach, particularly regarding the migration from Venezuela and of this country. We also aim to for a peaceful, harmonious, cooperative, and respectful coexistence with neighboring countries, uh, bringing uh, measures, public policy for victims of the conflict in Colombia abroad. Uh, one key key point of uh, our policy regarding peace is basically uh, fulfill and uh, fully implement the 2016 agreement with FARC. It's a, the, the first uh, key commitment of the, of the government, but also to reach out to other groups uh, that are still active in Colombia and produce uh, on, on keep the level of, of violence beyond what, what, uh, what can estimate it, 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 it is acceptable for our country. Uh, besides of that, uh, the the global, global projection in, in key issues, we are developing some regional strategies toward Africa, where 20% of our population is of, uh, is of African descent. So we're working on Africa, uh, on Africa strategic, that means, among other things, to establish new representations in, in, in this continent, uh, to have a broad and uh, plural projection in the Indo-Pacific region where the big actors are there and very important, where more of the economic activity of the world, of the trade of the world are, uh, are being held. And uh, in our neighborhood, we, maybe one of the, the key issues that we can see is the restablishment of relations with Venezuela after a, a complete breakout of, break of more than three years in two countries that are neighbors and very close in all aspects, so, so we are recovering that relation uh, with our neighbor, with major neighbor. Uh, we also want to deep our relation with the European Union, European countries in trade, peace, energy transition and sustainable development. We are building a strategic alliance that, in, that they will bring us to uh, sign a, uh, a new agreement, peace and, peace and cooperation agreement with the European Union uh, in, in the next year, I hope. Uh, we are consolidating also the relation with the United States and other traditional partners. Yeah, we are entering also in a new relationship with China. We try to maintain some strategic autonomy and have a deep and, and fruitful relation with the major, uh, major powers in the world and to play a regional role. We, we, we say that in, in our national development plan as, as we, we try to project Colombia as a leader in some global issues, region, regional leader in regional issues so we can uh, bring together our region to the big debates of the contemporary uh, uh, current uh, international scene in climate and drugs and migration and other issues that uh, connect us together. Mm, also, we are a Caribbean country. We, we are building new relations with our neighborhood. We are part of the Caribbean. We, can, we want to deepen the relation with them. And uh, react, the reactivating all the integration process we've been uh, participating in, in, in the past. Uh, and participating in all the regional consultation processes. Uh, on migration, you probably heard about it recently. We have a continental migration crisis that uh, it can be seen in, in our border with Panama in the Darien area, when basically two flows of people from, from, from South America are converging, one coming from the south, 
Banco de Northern Chile, uh, keeping together people from, uh, from Peru, Ecuador, and, and other nationalities, and from the eastern part of our country, from Venezuela, all of them converging in, in, in El Darien, where there is a huge uh, migration crisis right now. We are talking about a continental migration crisis okay, we need to work together. We're, we're trying to propose some measures to, 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 come to, to address that. Uh, one big issue for President Petro is uh, climate action and just energy transition. As you know, the, the world is approaching a critical point in, in regarding the climate crisis. And uh, because of that, we're proposing some initiatives to to address that crisis among them uh, and the chain of debt for a climate action uh, and effective cooperation in, 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 the in the climate front so the world can uh, stop the, the global warming problem that is uh, bringing us to, to, a, a, to a, a, a very critical point. We probably are close the the non-return point, we need to act that uh, before we reach that critical end and, and we'll be bringing new proposals to the COP28 that will be held in a couple of months in, in Emirates. Total peace policy, uh, you have to understand, as, I, as I, I said before, the first point is to to fulfill our, our, our commitments as Colombian state with the the 2016 uh, FARC agreement, and then uh, we, we are reaching out to other groups uh, still uh, still in arms in our country. The first of them is the ELN. As you mentioned, we, we, the Colombian states have been negotiated with the ELN for more than 20 years without reaching an agreement. Uh, the first time that Colombia has a left-leaning government uh, with the ELN interpret, interpreted as an opportunity to reach a definite peace agreement. We've been engaging with then five or six rounds of, of, uh, of negotiations in different countries, in Venezuela, Cuba, and Mexico so far. Uh, President Petro has fixed uh, 2025 as a prospective date for a definitive agreement with them. Uh, which will be uh, a good opportunity. But also, uh, the idea is to approach all the groups in arms. The, the, the second one is what we call the EMC, the Estado Mayor Central. It's basically, this is from FARC, those who were within the process and then defected, and those who never entered the peace process. Uh, the, this weekend, uh, we had a First uh, uh, table of uh, first round of negotiations with them, uh, we are agreed in, in principle to have uh, as it's far with, with them. Uh, it's a very risky uh, uh, attempt to to repeat with them, but we need to do it because uh, President Petro has said repeatedly, Colombia cannot uh, fulfill the, all their development uh, challenges without having peace before internally in all aspects, which means that also uh, the government is reaching out to other armed groups with no political agenda, basically uh, organized crime, offering them an opportunity to submit to law uh, 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 and get a uh, um, more li lenient treatment in, in, in the penal system. Uh, that's still not the... Has not, sorry, has not started, but it's a purpose uh, to, to reach out. Uh, the process with the uh, uh, Central High Command, or EMC, as in Spanish, started March 13, 2023, and we are working now in a, on a ceasefire. Uh, how, how peace uh, projects to our international policy? Probably the, the, the most uh, precise example is uh, our relation with Venezuela, where we decided to establish relations uh, after more than three years of complete uh, break, breakout. 
uh, we, with two purposes. One is uh, uh, reveal all the relation that we neglected for so many years. We need, we are trying to recreate institutions with Venezuela. We, we share with them a long border, 2,219 kilometers, very active with uh, millions of people living on both sides of, of, of the of the border, so we need to re re rebuild that relation. Was one, one part of it. it. It's only common sense to do that. You cannot have a, that kind of relation with a neighbor, so important. And the second one is to play a more constructive role regarding the internal process of Venezuela. As you know, the, the foreign policy of the previous government was aimed at uh, an, a change of regime in Venezuela, which obviously get a, a failure. Now we're trying to get a different approach to, to Venezuela, uh, helping as far as, uh, as we can, the internal process, approaching both parts, government and opposition, in, in their political uh, discussions. Uh, we've been playing a role, uh, not so visible, uh, or, uh, trying to approach the two sides and probably in the next few weeks uh, we'll see both parts to return to a process that he that had started in Mexico had the last round of negotiations later last year uh, we'll be working to try to to, to get them together and, and get an arrangement uh, we support and promote in general multilateralism and international and global dialogue as a fundamental mechanism for, for, for finding solutions with global problems. We, we, are, we are convinced that one uh, criteria to, to, to formulate foreign policy is not necessarily as it was before our national interest, which is still important, well, we still uh, are working now with the criteria. We need to cooperate, cooperate with our partners or our neighbors or what our friends around the world to solve problems. Now, one of the big challenges of the international uh, international scenario can be solved within only one country. Think about uh, drugs, think about uh, climate change, environment, think about migration. None of these countries have an one country only solution. So we we we, we prioritize cooperation as a way to, to confront to address those problems. Uh, with ELN, what probably is one of your interests, uh, we are working on that. And we have we agreement on a, a, a ceasefire, and very difficult to, to help, but they were working, working very hard to 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 have it to have it have it sustained. Um, and we're working on that, uh, as I told you before, uh, our interest is to reach an agreement by 2025, as President Petro has uh, has stated, uh, as is instructed to the government representation in, in, in the peace talks with ELN. And we have learned some lessons uh, about the previous peace process and we share experience with Ireland regarding peace issues. So uh, we highly appreciate the political cooperation support of Ireland for peace in Colombia, as I said before, and particularly during the Ireland's tenure in Security Council, we receive support and always constructive uh, comments and observations from, from Ireland in in New York, and we've been working together in, in many ways to, to deepen our cooperation on peace issues. And although each of our countries is uh, walking their own path, exchanging experiences, uh, it's important to learn from one another about innovative ways to overcome common challenges. I remember so many times Eamon Gilmore referring to a peace process in Colombia when we, we go and get to those moments of crisis. They, they told us, well, uh, our peace agreement, the Friday, Good Friday agreement was in 1998. I remember uh, we have so many years of experience still. The process is always fragile. Uh, we need to keep working and try to keep it alive. 
uh, you cannot take it for granted. Once you sign a peace agreement, you cannot see that the end of the process, probably the, the beginning of the process after signing peace, you need to, to work on the implementation and keep the course to, to, to avoid the, to avoid to get back to, to the conflict. Compromises must be made in those processes. We need to understand that in Colombia, that was clear, clearly discussed during the, or after the peace agreement, when they say, if you want peace, you probably need to sacrifice in some way justice because what, you have to value what's more important to have justice and bring all the, those who have broken the law before uh, or get with them some kind of agreement to, to, to keep peace. And within our point of view, peace is more important. Uh, and for the justice part, we, we, we have the transitional justice ways and we, we have, a, we have a implemented a justice, a special justice for peace tribunal to, to try those involved in the conflict. Uh, remember, we take in Ireland more than 23 years to implement the Good Friday Agreement. In Colombia, we're still in the early stages of implementation. But we, we have the, all the willingness to, to, to keep going ahead in that implementation. And, and, and that's why we are taking new, new, new initiatives to our, peace, to, to our peace. Ireland plays an important role in the in Colombian process, as expressed by U.S. Special Representative Ian Gilmore. Uh, he said once, uh, over the years, Irish civil society organizations, churches, trade unions, development agencies, and parliamentarians from North and South have regularly visited Colombia to express support for peace building and for the defense of human rights. All of which contributed to climate in which it was possible to advance in peace negotiations. We in Colombia try uh, all the time uh, or involved in political debates about the peace, peace agreement, peace implementation. And very often we, we feel that they, they were failing in in that peace process uh, because the internal debate is so intense that sometimes you seem, you, you, you seem to see that the, there's another conflict coming, coming over. But actually, when you take perspective, when you have partners and friends like Ireland and help us to see the situation in Colombia, we see that the Colombian peace agreement with FARC is uh, very successful. The, the FARC demobilized completely uh, they're fulfilling their obligations. The government is trying to do the their part of the agreement. No, no, that's as much as you, some, some people would like, but it's still working. The peace is, is, is being held. The, the far demobilized completely. Now they're a political party that participating in, in the political process. So uh, sometimes in spite of what our, our people believes or perceives uh, the peace agreement uh, is it, going to continue. That the same way we are going to, we are working with other actors with the ELN and we are engaging now with this uh, ECM or the, uh, the other groups because we need, uh, we need, uh, we are sure we, we need uh, to get peace before we, we address successfully other challenges that are coming for our situation. Mm, that is basically what we wanted to share with you and open to questions. I hope to to be able to answer them and and a diplomat for and for the foreign minister, uh, not as part of peace, but thank you very much.